all priced up with no one to buy. That's HomeTrack's verdict of the current state of the housing market. A recent survey from the property data specialists found that house prices fell by 0.1% in September, the 15th consecutive month of price falls. But despite this drop, asking prices for properties have actually been rising. Property site Zoopla's latest sentiment survey also found an increase in optimism amongst homeowners. Nick Leeming is the site's director. I asked him why this gap between asking prices and actual prices was widening. I think everyone always is optimistic about the value of their own property and certainly the sentiment survey that we've done show that people still think their own property is going to go up in value more than other property in their area. Um, and actually in the current climate you probably wouldn't expect to have an increase in value over the next 12 months at all. What impact is this widening gap having on the market in general and new buyers coming into onto the housing ladder? Mm. Well, certainly one of the great features of the current market is just the lack of transaction numbers. And whereas in 2006 we sold, or there were a total of 1.6 million units sold in the UK, uh, in the current year we're probably going to do well to reach 600,000. So that's a huge change in the number of transactions. Um, and that's just, that is a challenge for everyone. But while this is a challenge for homeowners and potential buyers, it's something of a blessing for private landlords who have been enjoying ballooning rents as more and more first-time buyers are blocked out of a stagnating housing market. And this resurgent rental sector also presents something of a plan B for property sellers who are unable to shift their homes. Research from Lloyd's found that 40% of homeowners attempting to sell their first property would be prepared to rent out their home and become a landlord if a sale did not materialise. 27% also said they would sooner rent their property to a first-time buyer than drop their price to attract interest. But who can blame them when the average UK rent is sitting at a record high of £713 per month? Those in lettings or those renting are seeing uh, was a boom in activity. It has been for some time, which in our view will probably continue for quite a while. Um, it's much harder to get mortgage finance. There's less social housing and all that's adding up to a sort of a boom in the private rental sector, uh, which we believe will carry on. Um, and normally what you see at this point in time is someone who's renting will say, it's cheaper to buy, I'm going to come out and buy or become a first time buyer. We're not seeing that now because they haven't got the, prop uh, the mortgages available at sort of high loan to values um, and ones where you can actually achieve a mortgage with just a five or even a smaller deposit. Um, so that means people are going to stay in rented longer. Um, and that's changing the whole aspect, if you like, of the, more, of the housing market itself. But while the aspect of the British housing market is most definitely changing, its future is still very uncertain. And with prices dormant, mortgage lending continuing to stagnate, and the Bank of England base rate still at an all-time low, it could be a while until we get any definite answers regarding the future of property in post-recession Britain. <laughs>